Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, honestly, Alberto, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I'm very excited about this. I've been I've been looking forward to this um, because and I and I don't say this very often, but I I don't know the last time I've applauded somebody I've had the chance to speak to. What an incredible work of art uh, across the Spider Verse truly is, and uh, the chance to speak with you about it and how it was made is is something I'm excited about. So thank you for that. I know that's great to hear, man. Thank you, thank you for saying that. Well, it, it really is remarkable. Like the the animation of this truly, I mean, the first one's great, but this one is one of those ones that takes what animation can do to the next level. It, it feels like uh, as an audience member sitting in there and it's just, it's just madness, like in the best of ways. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I think it's uh, like so many, um, we had a lot of internal debates on the first one about like, is this gonna work? Is it not gonna work? Different people had different sensibilities to different different tastes. And like, we were able to have, you know, a finished product that works because the filmmakers and the producers had a very strong voice and vision, but we kind of had to sort of fight among our, ourselves to get to that point. And when we got to the sequel, it's like, okay, now we know what worked there. And we all have like a much more um, unified target in what we in what we want to like amplify and what we want to like take from that um so i guess we were a lot less in our own way <laughs> uh, on this one than we were on the first one which is good i think uh it, it helped sort of like you know make it bigger and bolder well i i was wondering that because i i mean i mean you've sort of said this a little bit here but certainly the process the two films they fit together but this one going from bringing everyone to one universe to going to multiple universes i mean is an incredible incredible task and and huge i was just wondering like from how was how was the process what was the process like in those conversations and trying to decide what these these universes looked like and and was it much more difficult uh it was much more difficult yes uh, and it was much more ambitious uh, ambitious and um I think the main thing that this movie sort of taught us is that like when we made the first one, we were developing it as we went along, right? Because we had like a little bit of time to like develop the style, but we couldn't develop everything before starting. So we had to like start the movie, figure it out as we went along, and a lot of it evolved as we were working on it. In fact, by the end of the first one, we had to go back and fix or change a couple of things that we had done before we knew how to do it. <laughs> um, and the thing that was really surprising for me on this one, because um, I worked on the first one from the first day, I was working on the first early tests on that one until the very last minute, but I joined this one very late. I joined this one about like, uh, I think a year into like pre-production. Um, so a lot of the tests were already had been made, a lot of the explorations were in place. Um, we were just starting actual shot production. Um, and the thing that surprised me the most is how much uh, the, idea of what the first one was was like changing people's approach to this one um because it's such a especially animation because it's such a different thing when you see the finished product with everything in it text on screen and all the colors like it's so rich and so expressive it kind of makes you think oh i need to be over the top in what i'm doing because the movie feels like you remember it as being like you know very over the top and with a lot of stuff going on and on this one, the first instinct was to like go really big from the start. So like animation was like really, uh, you know, um, broad and exaggerated. And the problem with that is if you start broad in animation and then you put like crazy colors and text on screen and, um, you know, 2D effects and everything just amps it up. And in the end, it just becomes uh, noise, you know, like there's nothing to sort of anchor it down. Um, so we realized, at least when I joined early on, that we needed at least animation to be like an anchor. We need things to be, um, you know, grounded so that then we can stylize the crap out of it. Because uh, if everything's, you know, noisy and everything's loud, then it just doesn't work. It becomes unclear. Um, so going back to your question about like, how do we approach like different scenarios? The main thing was figuring out which um, area or, or which like um, aspect of it is the one that's going to be very very loud so mm -hmm. that we can make sure that everything else 
is toned down, grounded, anchoring it into something that allows it to be um, clear. Because if you have you know many different things trying to be in your face all at once, then it just becomes messy. Um, so it was a process of like, we know what each world, like from the scripts and from the character design, each world had a very defined either like influence or style, you know, just like punk is very much taken from like punk DIY zines from the 80s, you know, and the late 70s and punk posters from shows and all of that. So we have a clear reference. Um, and from there, it's about choosing and strategizing, you know, what's going to be the thing that speaks loudly and what's going to be the thing that needs to be sort of more on a, on a supportive role. And sometimes it's, it's a balance, you know, sometimes it changes. Um, but that was like the main approach. It's like, we can't just come in with the excitement of the first one and go like, yeah, I, we're just gonna dial it up to 11 because it breaks it. Uh, it's it's a, um, interestingly enough, it's a very fragile balance to mm -hmm. get the style right. Um, and so, yeah, I think that the, the approach to like different worlds was to try to like define what was gonna be the thing that was gonna, you know, sing and what was gonna be like sort of the, the, the backup uh, dancers on the background. Well, that, that's one of the things that amazes me, to be honest, like even just the, you know, early on in the film when, for lack of a better name, Da Vinci's Vulture mm -hmm. shows up and you've got, you've got, you've got Da Vinci's Vulture, you've got Spider Woman, you've got, uh, you've got Gwen, you've got uh, uh, Miguel, and you've got all, all in another universe and they're all happening at the same time with their own style around them and i'm just like it, it 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 felt to me like it must have i don't know if it felt like this for you but as a viewer it felt like you were conducting you know <laughs> different instruments together so it's yeah. interesting to hear you say like there's we had to figure out which one was going to ground us and then you bring in the other pieces on top of it because that it, it's it would be completely overwhelming to try and do all these different things at the same time it must have been yeah, and that sequence specifically, all the Guggenheim fight, um, it was already somewhat started when I joined and we were still tinkering with it at the very end. Like, it's very much a, a, a game of like, put something in there, react to it, finesse it, goes to edit, they tinker with it. it you know, it, it, all different departments get their say and their little input and their little sort of um, ideas in there. And then we take a step back and we reassess. And now we've got, we, we've got to clean it up. And then it goes back to anim and we start sort of finessing it. Um, it's very much, like, in that sense, that's another thing that makes this movie very, very challenging. Um, it's a very collaborative process and every department gets their own little ideas in a lot of, and a lot of creative ownership. Um, but it's usually animated movies are made in a very sort of straight line um, kind of structure. You know, one department does one thing, it sends it over to the next department and then at the end it's just done mm -hmm. um, and you want to minimize how much things uh sort of come back but on this one because of how of the complexity of it we kind of needed to have something for the other department to do so that we could see it lit and come and we do two two effects so that we can understand what it's going to look like so that we can actually get it back and mm -hmm. you know change it or reanimate it or at least like finesse it based on that because a lot of the times you know, some shots, we had no idea that the background was going to be abstract. We're just animating it. And that stage hadn't you know, gotten to us yet. So by the time we see that, it's like, oh, okay. So if that's how it's going to look, then it's probably better if we actually do this or that. Um, so it's a very, it's, it's just, it feels more like a conversational sort of approach to a pipeline, which is a great way to get like production people to freak out. <laughs> uh, that's not what you kind of want. Um, but it does allow you to get there because it's 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 an end result that it would be impossible to just envision at once and just put it on screen and that's it you know you kind of have to like iterate towards it it's it's um yeah it's like baby steps <laughs> until we can get to this very very complex goal um yeah that that makes so much more sense like i mean and i'm not comparing the films at all but a film like toy story for example which was a game changer as well for its day. Um, you know, to the, there's sort of a, there's a continuous style all the way through it. So you get the sense, like what you're saying there, you can almost see it's like, okay, well, we've done this part now. We're going to send this to them. 
but the creative process you're describing is similar to the viewing experience. It's like, okay, well, we need to do this part. Oh, now while someone is working on this part, we have to do this part and bang, 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 bang. And it, it wow. I mean, that's just, that's just wild. Uh, yeah. To me. yeah. Um, I was wondering too, uh, well, since there's so many, I was wondering if there was a particular, uh, a particular universe that you were more excited about animating than others was there one that you were like man this is my favorite or character <laughs> yeah i mean i'm a big fan of spot um i think animating spot was my sort of highlight of the production i loved everyone um miles has a very special place in my heart and i it's kind of weird because i feel like from all the crazy different worlds i kind of like miles better as like just to animate him just like i feel like he's such an interesting character to work with um, but Spot had a very interesting journey internally with us. Like, I think when, when I joined the, he was already like modeled and designed, but only the silly sort of version of Spot existed and it was still very early. And the first sort of attempt at testing him they had done was very, um, his face was very expressive, meaning that the Spot would change shape and almost, almost like become anthropomorphic, you know, he was. Uh, almost had like a face with eyes. Um, and the main thing that we sort of um, found ourselves with is like, we don't know where this character is going yet. Like we have the silly version of Spot, we have the bodega, you know, early Spot and we can animate him and we have some ideas, but we still haven't figured out where this is going to. And that's a problem because we kind of want to set up those things early, but if we don't want, if we, we don't know what those things are, we can't really set them up. Um, so to me, the, the process of like figuring out Spot and his entire sort of arc and his transition and how he, his design evolves and what he gets to was creatively the most satisfying um, part of the production. And then seeing it actually become a reality and, and you know, pay off so well, was like, uh, yeah, incredibly satisfying. You know, it's funny, you know, when they first announced Spot, I had the same reaction as many, which was who, uh, but he's such a blast. And I could see like, uh, I could see that I'm sure from an animator's perspective, like to see how he starts out and as he grows and grows and grows and just how even his style changes and all that stuff. Um, he's, he's awesome. Um, actually, it's funny. My, I took my eight year old to see it. Not that this story matters, but I took my eight year old to see the movie. And, you know, they wanted the souvenir cups. I said, okay, I'll buy them the souvenir cup. They had Miles, they had Gwen. He's, I'll take the spot. And <laughs> I was like, really? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I, I loved him. I was like, oh, okay, great. Um, that's awesome. It's funny. I had, a, I had a friend of mine who used to work on, on Paw Patrol way, way back when it started. And mm -hmm. what he would tell me is that it was, uh, he used to love working on the villain because he was the most interesting to animate because he was always doing different things. And I know it's a completely different level compared to where this goes. Um, but, but still, yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, go ahead, sorry. No, it's just, it's it's very interesting. Like it's a, it's a crazy movie though, because like, I love Hobie. Hobie's crazy and he's yeah. great Johnny made. Miguel, holy crap, he was awesome. Like every character is so interesting. The thing that to me is it's really crazy about this one is that usually main characters, in animated movies tend to be a little bit boring to animate because we we you know there's a very big trope that we're like the main character would just be like a good guy or like someone who's not the most interesting and they kind of need characters around them to push them and i feel like that's why i love miles so much because yeah. i feel like this is a movie where like to me miles is by far the most interesting one even though everyone else is amazing um and spot is such an unusual villain that also makes him really um, stand out because he's not a bad guy. You know, even if you compare him to King, King Ping on the first one, King Ping on the first one kind of feels less complex of a character in a way, as much as I love that movie and that character and everything about it. it like Spot has such a uh, um, sort of human uh, beginning until he escalates to that. Um, and the juxtaposition of, He's very much not human. He doesn't look human, but he's a lot more relatable in many ways than villains tend to be. Um, yeah, that was a, a very interesting sort of process. And visually, 
there's a lot of ways in which we sort of convey that with how we treat him graphically. Um, basically, all of the spots in him, the, the darkness, the dark matter, conceptually, at least on an internal side, we kind of treated it as almost as a parasite. Like this is something that, you know, was uh, sort of bestowed onto him. He didn't choose it. And now it ruined his life. And the more powerful he gets, the more spots he gets, right? The, the darker um, and the more his sort of um, real life, I guess, human self becomes abstract. So the more he powerfully gets, the more angular and distorted and abstract his actual form becomes until he just becomes fully, uh, you know, experimental. Um, but it's basically the, the his journey from being just a guy to being a supervillain also also goes from like being an unfinished sort of sketch of a drawing to being a fully expressive experimental animation kind of thing. And I, I just felt, yeah, it, it's such an interesting task to be given, you know, as an, as an animator. Uh, and, and, and it's with, with so much freedom to just pitch ideas and throw things against the wall that, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very um, rewarding process. Right, it must be, I'm sure. I, I wanted to ask you to, I mean, more, I, Miles, I think, is a very special character. He certainly is right now. And I'm wondering from your perspective, what is it that Miles offers us that, that other superheroes don't right now? It's a good question. Um, man, I feel like to me, uh, Miles has always been like a character from, from the first one and, and mostly on this one, uh, who's kind of going against everything that we sort of expect um, of, the, the, the superhero films, I feel like there's a lot of, you know, funny or appealing or like um, charismatic, you know, main characters and superhero films. But I think Miles is very much actively going against it in a way, which, which makes him sort of like defiant of what it means to be a superhero. Like even the first one, like the reason he's wearing shorts over his suit is because he doesn't like to wear skin tight, you know, a skin tight suit. Like just like any of us would, like if I had to put on a Spider-Man costume, I'd be like, okay, maybe I can just put pants on this. Um, and it's it's such a, I feel like it, it, he just brings such a fresh sort of approach to that because he's doing the thing by kind of not wanting to do the thing or at least like doing the thing in a way that's a bit more, um, I guess grounded is not the right word, but you know, he, he, he feels much more like just a, a regular kid with his own very much like his own personality and his own approach. And uh, yeah, he's just going against a, a lot of the tropes that we've seen and are kind of getting um, tired of, I guess. And that makes him very uh, interesting. Uh, for sure. It, it, he, there's something very fresh about his character that is exciting to see on screen, like you're saying there. But follow up, the multiverse, like, not just in this film, the Spider-Verse, but I mean, the multiverse is extremely popular right now. Like beyond Miles, it's coming up in, it, it comes up in, of course, Marvel's doing a whole thing with it. DC's doing it now too. What do you think it is about the multiverse that right at this <laughs> moment, like it's, there's something about it that's connecting with our culture. And, and, and it, I think it's an interesting idea. Yeah, I mean, even A24 is doing it, right? <laughs> like yeah, we have everything. That's right, of course. Uh, it won Best Picture last year for the multiverse, yeah. of course. Yeah, it's a very interesting, like, I don't think I have an answer about, like, wh why it's so popular now. Because I feel like it's not just a, a, a trend, you know? I feel like it, I mean, sure, there's an aspect of that, like something, you know, some, the minute something good becomes popular, then or something new becomes is made with, with care and becomes popular, then that thing can, like, um, get uh, like you know, influence other things, but I feel like you're right. Like it's very much everywhere, and I think people connected to it very strongly. I'm not sure what about it is the thing that's engaging. Um, I think in the case of Spider Verse, um, it's to me. I think it's the fact that it really um, allowed us to get 
so much out of animation that wasn't really, I feel like animation with exceptions here and there, but in general, animation had tends to get a little bit stale, you know, like the styles tend to get a little bit samey um, and we go through like waves, but usually as any business sort of tends to, you know, like in, anything that works is safer. So that gets done more often. And I think the idea of the multiverse allows animation and these movies to really showcase, you know, so much of, of the power of the, the, the expressive sort of, um, uh, how expressive animation can be. Um, and I think that, you know, put together with a story that it's like, the, the interesting thing is like the story is very grounded. The story is very personal. Like it's not a story about the, the multiverse and the, it's a story about, it's a coming of age story. It's a story about finding your, your, your own voice and your own place. Um, and I think that combination makes it really interesting. The fact that you're seeing something incredibly vast and you know, surreal, like multiverses colliding um, from a very personal perspective with all these different art styles to like dress it up and be expressive, you know, through it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. I think the thing that makes people sort of click with it, but it's a very good, like I, I would need to, now you made me curious about why it's everywhere um, all at once. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll give that a thought and get back to you. Well, it, it's it's such a wild concept, and and it's so cool because I don't know, just to, to not just everything everywhere, but the idea of everybody's story sort of mattering, I think, is so cool as well. It's it's so interesting to me. Yeah, um, Umberto, we're starting to run out of time. And I'm sure that as soon as I ask this, the little red laser, you know, the sniper rifle might appear you. I'm just ask. I just wondered if there's anything you can tell us about the the next film, or if you, I, I'm assuming you're involved in it. Um, I, I obviously can't say a thing about it. Um, I I hope I'm in it. Um, I'm still not 100 percent sure I'm in it, um, but I, I think I'm going to be in it. Uh, and I think that's as much as I'll say because I don't even know if I'm going to be in it. So I, <laughs> I have no authority uh, to to comment on anything else. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> from from what I know, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm very much looking forward to it, and I'm so thankful for your time. The film is phenomenal, and the animation is so is stunning. It is just absolutely stunning. Um, so thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I wish you the best. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's working on projects like these is like, you know, dream come true to, to someone like me. I get I think from most people in animation. So I'm always thrilled to like <laughs> talk about it. This is like me just geeking out about the stuff that we we made. So I'm, um, yeah, thank you, man. This is this is awesome. Well, I I appreciate it, and you know, to be honest, animation is something I've always been fascinated with. Like even back in the days of the, you know, cell animation and stuff like that. So it is just, I'm excited about it. So thank you so much. Have a great day. And uh, hopefully you'll be on uh, Beyond the Spider Verse as well. So. Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.